ground for minutes. This could even be on the ground for over an hour. In fact, this is kind of the long range. Friends near Haytai, how about Southern Lake County, Trent? Give them a text now, give them a call. Hey, I'm watching this on the news. Rain starting from Fulton to Clinton, Kentucky. If you're in Graves, we're putting you on warning. This is your early warning. Central Graves, start preparing now. If you have a bike helmet, if you have a baseball helmet, go get it out of the garage, park your cars in the garage in the Mayfield area, Western Graves, and just outside of Clinton. You need to be sheltered now. We're 239 intersects 94. This is your tornado, and it's coming right for you. KC, Kentucky, if you room, bathroom, closet, you need to go there now. See, but that is an ugly radar return. I mean, it does not get, as we've been telling you now, there are no more words that we can tell you. This is the highest end of highest end tornado. Similar or dissimilar, all the red is things that are similar. That is the tornado. And this is gonna run so quickly over Interstate 24. I sure hope that people are driving if you know any friends or family, again, going either way on 24, this is going to cross over Interstate 24. This is not a possible tornado. This is not may happen, could happen. It is happening. And Guys, we are seeing some sleet falling now again in Paducah. I'm not going to lie. I volunteered to do this, believe it or not. And, you know, you'd think I would know how cold it is. But, man, let me tell you, it's cold out here. The wind chill is like in the teens. We've got some light sleet falling now. We're going to pan and show you. I want to point out something to you here. With the uh, sleet that fell last night, there's pretty hard. our newest tornado warning. And we're going to stay with you here on TV, wall to wall. And also, we'll be on Facebook, too. So if you're sirens in the city of Mayfield and in Wingo. And I want to keep you calm and make sure you're aware of this, that if you're in Mayfield, the tornado risk is probably going to pass south of you. So Willard Oak, uh, but the good news is I'm not seeing debris showing up yet of uh, damage. Funnel clouds tonight. Look at the wind speeds here, 70 miles an hour. Scroll all the way down at the bottom. You're going to see government alerts. Make sure your emergency alerts tap on that are on. If you wind speed away from the radar, which would be in the red, so this is the wind going from southeast to northwest. That indicates the ability and the conduciveness of the atmosphere to produce hail, which there's a ton of instability. 80 people died across six states. And more than 80 of those deaths were in Kentucky alone, making it the deadliest tornado in state history. Outside of working at WPSD is to get to local schools and talk to students about weather safety and preparedness. We do doing a change in days per year with the ingredients needed for tornadoes to form. A clear increase in the red colors. Guys, I think it's fair to say that tomorrow morning through about 7, 8 a.m. is going to be more slick than this morning. Well, the difference from 5,000 feet to the ground is quite significant tonight. It's about 13 degrees. So these things started snowflakes like if the satellite was here. Here's Nashville. Here's St. Louis. So the entire canopy of the hurricane, look at area. These are the lowest temperatures recorded every year. What do you say? I take a taste of that right now. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Live from downtown Paducah, Todd. I'm telling you, this is who are combining to give us a very strong southerly breeze up where the clouds are, and that's what's causing the rain outside your wind. Positive bolts are the more uncommon type of lightning. They strike from the top of the cloud to the ground. Plume of dust trailing across the Atlantic Ocean. That's what you're looking at. First and foremost, and I want to scream this from the rooftops and for everybody in back, this is not, this is not a December 10th, 2021 2.0 type. All right, we cover a big area here with four states, and it's really variable based on where you live. If you're in southeast Missouri, it's been a very snowy evening. With another question is where does it track? And I will tell you, if you want a big snowstorm in the local six area, told, we've told you this every winter, you want the low to go east of Nashville, mass centered over Florida. We're stuck in the middle in an active storm track. There'll probably be one, if not two, textbook set up for there to be ice somewhere in this part of the country. Now, that being said, so there still could be changes to this tomorrow, folks. It's not set in stone. That said, I think this is the most likely scenario. A slushy inch to two inches, Duca 37 in Murray. We call this uh, evaporational cooling. The precip has brought down all the cold air from aloft. 
Now, it's now rain is something that is quite a concern across the region this evening. Somewhere in West Kentucky, Tennessee, in the boot heel, there could be significant flash flooding. As a broad forecast, I think our notables tonight are the following. We do have some thunderstorms coming in overnight. Some of them will be big thunder boomers with some lightning and thunder, gusty winds, and a hail threat. We'll talk about that more in a second. Thing here by tomorrow morning. This is something, it does happen, but it is certainly impressive when it does happen. That can hold 4% more water vapor. And when you do that, multiple degrees in a convective thunder half of it over the next, let's say, seven to eight days. And the reason why I think that's the path, big high pressure out in the Atlantic should not prevent it, but for the most part, keep it from going totally out to sea. And there'll be this little corridor of which that it should track up the East Coast. Here's my take on the musical references over the uh, decades, seeing as though we're going from the 50s to the 80s. In the next four days, I did catch a little bit of flack with the street. We had about, you know, four to six foot snow drifts. Now, this is the snows all day Thursday. Notice sleet in the middle of the area, freezing rain. That's the change now is that the freezing rain is moving. Today's focal point, though, was on the tornadoes from December. I want to show you now a couple of the graphics about what was discussed today here at the conference. We'll share it with you. First and foremost, our new. We want to talk about how great this weather is. Meteorologist yeah. Noah Bergren joining me now. Noah, I mean, we couldn't have ordered anything better. The barbecue's hot, but the weather's not anymore. Yes. So that's some good news. It was 100 degrees yesterday. Now, thankfully, the food is the only thing that's near 100 yeah. degrees today. It feels great out here. Actually, you might want to bring a jacket if you're coming on down. Can local six meteorologist Noah Bergren dance? Well, the short answer is yes, he can. Tonight, he put on his dancing shoes and showed off his skills for a good cause. The Dance for Gold was earlier tonight at the Paducah Convention Center. Proceeds from the event will go to families with a child going through cancer treatment in West Kentucky, Southern Illinois, and Tennessee. Noah and others were paired with dance professionals. Tonight, they showed off all that hard work from weeks of practice. And it was pretty fun to watch Noah dance. All right. <laughs> Visualize this, I'm going to pour 50% relative humidity. Because remember what the relative humidity is, it's half of what the temperature is at 50%. So half of this glass would be half of that, half of this one would be half of the bourbon glass, and half of the mug would be half of that. Now which one of these now do you think is going to be the most humid? It's not going to be the shot glass on the end. This one's 50% relative humidity, this one's 50%, and this one's 50%. The reason why this is relevant is because now you see the dew point. The dew point is how much moisture is in the air. All of them had the same relative humidity, but the one today, the dew point is 74. This is a tremendous amount more moisture in the air than this. This is not very humid at all. That's why the dew point tells you physically how much water is in the air, and the more of it there is, the more uncomfortable, the more sticky and oppressive it feels like we had out there today. So that All right, everything remains on track with the forecast tonight. If you're just joining us or you haven't been informed yet so far this afternoon, much of the area is under a uh, rare level four risk for severe weather. We refer to that as the moderate category that's everywhere shaded in red. Some historical context for you real quick regarding this high of a threat. Recent times we've been under a moderate level four risk. The Brookport tornado, that was an outbreak of severe weather November 17th, 2013. The Perryville deadly EF4 tornado, February 28th of 2017, was one of our more recent moderate risk events. Temperatures out there right now are conducive for severe weather at 73 Union City, 76 in Dyersburg, 72 right now in Murray. We're close to record highs at virtually all locations. 66 now Metropolis, 66 now as well in Marion. But the, the main reason, despite the cloud cover, because I know there might be at least some of you who are saying it was cloudy most of the afternoon, not all, most, where'd the instability come from? It's this, the dew points are close to historical highs for both the winter and December. Dew points are in the upper half of the 60s. It feels humid. Check out the boot heel, 68 is the dew point in Sykeston. That is what's typical in August, not two weeks before Christmas. That's the main reason we have this. Every county in our area is under a tornado watch. Remember that means that conditions are favorable for tornadoes. A couple of things I wanna point out to you. Know your county. I know to some of you this might seem trivial, but it is very important. We cover a large area 
It's very possible that Trent and I tonight could be covering multiple tornadoes at one time. Know what county you live in, what part of the county, because these are going to be moving very fast and the warnings will be probably coming out very fast as well. A couple of other things to bring to your attention. Know your tornado terminology. Not saying this to scare anybody. We have to face this fact, make sure we're prepared for this tonight. Currently, we're right here. We have a tornado watch. That means be prepared. Conditions are favorable for tornadoes. We will get tornado warnings in parts of the area tonight. That is meaning that there is either a tornado on the ground, has been seen by somebody, or is radar indicated. We're going to hope we don't get to the, the highest threshold of this. Some of you might not know this exists. It's pretty rare. A tornado emergency. Essentially, that means a large, violent, catastrophic tornado is on the ground doing damage at said moment in time. If we see that tonight, that's what that means. We're going to hope we don't see that at all. A quick reminder for you. If you live in a mobile home, a manufactured home, hopefully by now you've located somewhere that you can get to ahead of time. So you're not waiting and trying to you know, scramble in five or 10 minutes to get somewhere of a better shelter. Remember interior room for most of us is going to be the place to go. Radars right now. We do have some showers and storms that are trying to form. They're moving real, real fast to the northeast. You see that there over I-57, but the cap is in place. Think of it like a lid over a boiling pot of water. It's preventing things from getting out of hand just yet. A couple of showers here in northern Graves, a decent one in southern Graves, but it's this area across mid-Arkansas and west Tennessee. We expect the radars to continue to fill in with storms and will rapidly track off to the northeast over the next few hours. New tonight, we expect there to be multiple rounds of storms from now through about 4 a.m. tomorrow. So we cannot sound the all clear until about 4 a.m. tomorrow. Here's five, notice those showers by six. Small chance we could have a severe storm. Here's seven, but it's really eight o'clock. We talked about this on our Facebook Live. If there's a line in the sand to draw here, it's after eight, things probably will start getting pretty active. By nine, 9.30, 10. Any of these cells could not only produce damaging winds, very heavy rain, but a tornado and even a strong tornado because of the high amount of wind energy that is in the atmosphere. Notice there's a big cluster of storms. It is very possible Trent and I will be on here covering multiple warnings at the same time later tonight. 11, 12, that first round moves out. And then we could have another round with the cold front come in in the middle of the night. Here's 2 a.m., 3 o'clock tomorrow morning. Anywhere in here could be damaging winds or tornado, although the highest tornado risk will probably be ahead of this. And then by 5 to 6 a.m. tomorrow morning, we could sound the all clear. We're going to go through much more detail for you. We'll be through here. Uh, we'll be here for you all night. We'll get you another update coming up at the end of the newscast.